Hello, my name is Gary Brantner and I make Peter Pan the Vampire comics. Let me open up my Photoshop now. And so, while I make my, my fo Peter Pan the Vampire comics, I am going to do tutorials. Right now I'm opening up my color key. It is a page that has all the colors I typically use already on them. T-shirts of Peter Pan and Wendy and Maui. Things like that that I, I use regularly to stay consistent throughout the whole thing. Anyway, so I'm going to be doing tutorials more to uh, motivate me to keep going and making my pages than really to teach you guys anything. But if you pick up anything from the way I do it, it's a bonus for you guys. So what I just did is I opened up my uh, Peter Pan the Vampire 4th issue, page 16, so that I could work on it. And now I am, let's see, I, I need this a little bigger though. Let's see, 8? Yeah, that'll do it. So I need to convert it into uh, a workable platform so that I can because right now it's a bitmap I save them as 300 dpi bitmaps and now I have to go into image mode and I have to change it from bitmap to grayscale and then I have to rename my layer over here that's where the layer is Let's see you got the whole screen on there back up the laptop a little bit there so over here I'm renaming the layer into inks and that unlocked it so now I can go into image again down to mode and I can change it from grayscale now to color RGB oh wait shoot I forgot a step. Well, I could still do that now. I'm going to click on all the white, highlight all the white, hit the delete key, and it leaves me with nothing but inks. And there we have it. Nothing but inks. So, now I can make a new layer down here in the bottom right corner. Click on a new layer, put it under the inks, and I'm going to call it background. Grab my rectangular tool, marquee it across the whole page. Eyedropper tool, go to my color key, and I'm going to pick this blue color over here in uh, what I called ice. Go back to my page, get my paint bucket and click it all blue and there we go now I'm gonna make a bunch of new layers they're gonna be for every different thing on here layers for hair a layer for clothing and a new layer for skin and actually I'm going to make I have characters with wings so I'm gonna have hair slash wings on one layer and what else do I need oh and one layer for small things that's gonna be things like eyes lips and rings anything tiny that needs to be above the character skin. Let's see, do I have everything? Close skin. Yep, that's pretty much everything. And now I am going to zoom in. Oh, let's see here. It's been four minutes. Alright, I'm going to zoom in here to this pan first panel and I'm going to flat this entire panel 
this is of Gwen, my vampire slayer. I zoom into about 60, 70, somewhere around there. And I grab my magnetic tool. And let's start with, let's see, skin. So I'm going to eye drop here. And she is darker because she's a vampire slayer. So she's been in the sun a lot more than any of my vampires. So she has a darker skin tone. Go back to magnetic. And no, I'm going to zoom in one more notch. There we go. So with my magnetic tool, I'm going to outline her skin. And the magnetic tool uh, sticks to my inked lines. And that's why they call it a magnetic tool. Usually the tool will just go wherever your mouse goes. But I'm, if I stick to the outlines here, and there we go. You, you can see what it's doing right now. So I make the shape of her face and neck anywhere that there's skin. But I have to click at each line that way it doesn't spur. It, it just looks funny. Let's see here. And go to the hair. But yeah, a little bit about me is uh, I have two boys. You might be able to hear them. I'm, I'm not sure how well the microphone on this is. But typically, I have a hard time working on my comic because they're always around and going crazy doing stuff dropping chips or cereal all over the floor things that boys do and now it's connected and as you can see they call it dancing line ants and so these dancing ant lines are all around it that's the area that's going to get colored I go to a paint bucket drop it in there and now her skin is peach then I can go up to clothing, click on that layer, click on my eyedropper again, and I have Gwen's shirt is purple. Go back to the lasso, magnetic lasso, and trace out her shirt. Which, it's so uh, paneled off, cropped off, that there's not a whole lot of it to color. I'm trying to right now I'm trying to get it to give me a straight line. There we go. So that I can do a straight line from that to the corner. Now I'm gonna do that again, hit and delete space until it gives me a straight line. Oh that didn't work. It's too short of a distance. Oh, now it's being weird. Okay, well, that's part of the bearing with me kind of lesson things that you're getting. There we go, straight line again. I'm just going to have to go up the panel wall into the hair. Now since this layer is going to be under everything well it's it's going to be sandwiched between hair and skin and so that makes this layer on top of the skin layer and connected the whole thing paint bucket drop it and now I have a shirt now I go up to in the bottom right corner again I'm picking a new layer hair and wings this is actually my character with wings, but they're cropped off. You can't see them out of the panel. But now I'm going to trace her hair. 
and another time I will show you color holds. Well, maybe I'll do that in this panel. Depends on what my timer tells me. So right here, trace in her hair. I'm going to do the straight line thing here by hitting backspace. There we go. Right there to there. And if I kind of sound like a dork, that's because I am. No excuses there. There we go. I could talk about right now. But I'm just coloring some hair. Okay, now I'm going to do the straight line thing again. There we go, up to that corner. Do the straight line again and connect. Now, oh, I didn't eye drop my hair color, so I'm going to go down to this yellow paint bucket, back to my page, and her hair is yellow. Not too bad. So, let's see here. That is a whole panel of that. I still have 11 minutes on this little episode. So, I'm going to get my lasso, but I'm going to unmagnetize it, so I hit L and it changed to a regular lasso. See, now I got a regular lasso. But, let's see here. I'm going to go up to the inks layer. Oh, whoops, I never did the small things here. Let's go back a notch. Okay, back to lasso. Magneticize it. Now I gotta make her lips pink. So I'm on the small things layer. Oh, got a spur there. There. And hold down the shift so I can get two. Holding down the shift allows me to uh, cover two different places that aren't touching each other. So now I'm connecting. Eyedropper, go to my pink for lips, bucket, and boom. We have pink lips and small things. Now, still on small things, I'm going to change it to white and trace out her teeth. Connect, paint bucket, and teeth. There we go. When I push Control H, the dancing lines that show you where the area was disappear. And there we have Gwen, my vampire slayer. And now on lasso again, I'm going to undo the unmagnetize it thing, and I'm going to do a color hold thing. So the black lines of her hair are going to be changed into yellow lines of her hair. I have to make sure I am on the inks layer for that because the lines are the inks. And I have it up here in the top left hand corner. 
these squares up here. Single square means I only have one selection. Two squares means that I can have multiple selections. So anything in those that I click is going to turn yellow. So I'm just outlining her hair but trying to stay away from outlining the panel. There we go. my boys. I don't know if the mic's picking them up, but they're in the bathtub right now just splashing around. As soon as my timer goes off, I will go get them out, dress them, and then they will be noisy and I won't be able to do this. Okay, just as an example, I will cut to showing you what I'm doing here. Let's see, get a big chunk here for you to see what I'm doing. Make sure I don't get her ear. still have six minutes so I'm good all right let's get this hair right here Avoid the chin. And here's some more chin. Ooh, I drew that line really close to her neck. So I'm going to have to be careful. I hope I'm not too loud. Right by the camera. Alright, now I go to color dropper on my color key and I'm going to pick it's the same color as her hair so it'll make it disappear. Go to paint bucket and I'm going to click on a black line of her hair and it'll make all the lines yellow. So if I make the hair layer disappear you can see oh no that I made her hair yellow but I missed a few lines. So I've got to go back through and fix those. But yeah, I'm going to leave them leave the hair layer invisible for now so that I can see what I'm doing. Looks like I missed a line by her ear. And I missed all these lines. But this is what we call a color hold, which I've learned this from uh, everything I know about coloring. I've learned from a book called The Hi-Fi Color for Comics by Brian Christy Miller. You can find those on Amazon and eBay. And you can follow them on Facebook under Hi-Fi Color for Comics group. And I, I do recommend getting those books. They're very educational. 
Oh man, that's not good. Okay, shoot. So I'm up here in the top corner. I'm going to put the deselect because it looks like I made her teeth yellow. And I'm going to change those back to black. Oh, shoot. Okay. Undo. Undo. Now I got to change those back to black. The teeth. Now take that line off and go back to lassoing and then I can change them to yellow again. But yeah, this is super fun, isn't it? Starting to worry about my boys. I think they might have might be dumping shampoo into the tub. So I better hurry and do this and then send this video off to the internet. Okay, now I'm ready to turn these this hair yellow. And see, there we go. Color holds. But once I finally color all the hair, that will make more sense. Let's zoom out a little bit. Oh, and put the hair back. There. So I've got one panel flatted. And it's ready for coloring. But I'm going to flat the whole rest of the page before I do that. So you'll join me next time and I will flat this Peter Pan right here. And let's see what else. That's um, You can follow Rentnarb Studios Comics on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and DeviantArt. I am more social on the uh, Instagram so if you follow me there you're gonna see a lot of pictures of well my kids but a lot of pictures of my art all my art goes to my Instagram and my Rent Art Studios Facebook page gets a lot of that and I also have a draw night which is a, a local art class thing that I do where uh, the first Thursday of every month we gather together in the Garland Tremont or Garland Utah library and meet for an hour of drawing and now I teach little steps on how to do stuff like that but yeah anytime you find Renarp Studios comics on social media it's usually me just look for my little alien right here on my laptop I have a sticker of my Renarp alien that is me if you see that somewhere that's me so this is my laptop. It's just a standard little, um, what brand is this? HP. It's actually Maui and there's my timer. So thanks for joining me.